Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Claire Fahey with Government Executive Media Group, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our next CyberSmart 2020 Summit session, The Future of Networks, a presentation from Alan Hill, Acting Deputy Assistant Commissioner for Category Management at the General Services Administration. Alan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Claire. All right, let's get started with the federal, uh, the future of networks. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm Alan Hill. Today, we're going to talk about the long-term challenges we face with federal cybersecurity. And we're going to explore how we can leverage AI to protect our network infrastructures and everything else that relies on it. Next slide, please. I'm going to open up with a quote from the Executive Order 13859, American AI Initiative, the United States National Strategy on Artificial Intelligence. AI promises to drive growth of the U.S. economy, enhance our economic and national security, and improve our quality of life. The White House unveiled the strategy in 2019. It's a concerted effort to promote and protect national AI technology and innovation. It's a direct that the federal government to pursue five pillars for advancing AI. The first, invest in AI research and development. Second, unleash AI resources. Third, move barriers to AI innovation. And fourth, train an AI ready workforce. And five, promote an international environment that is supportive of American AI initiative and its responsible use. The use, the US is also actively leveraging AI to help the federal government work smarter in its own services and mission in trustworthy ways. We need to apply this concept to IT security in our federal networks. With all the money that's being spent, we have to ensure that we're working smarter and using AI, machine learning, and robotic processes automation strategically. We're seeing an upward trend in government IT spending, security spending. Next slide, please. This chart shows cybersecurity funding for all federal agencies over the past few years. The dark blue represents the total amount requested. In 2018, we had almost $15 billion requested. In 2019, 16.6. In 2020, 17.4. In 2021, there is 18.779 requested. Light blue res presentation adjustments made after the original request. The FY 2020 cyber budget was adjusted up an additional $1.3 billion. That's a lot of money. OMB also re restated up the final FY 19 budget by nearly $300 million. This gives a clear picture of what is actually spent. And they do not represent the entire cybersecurity budget. This is due to sensitive nature of some activities. With this in mind, an actual 2020 spending could exceed $19 billion. Next slide, please. So where does this, all, all this money go? DOD and federal civilian uh, financial, chief financial officers and act agencies. This chart shows the top 10 recipients of federal cybersecurity funding in the FY21 budget. The line shows percentages changed by fiscal year. The dark blue shows FY19 to 20. The light blue shows 20 to 21. Department where both lines go above 0% are the strongest in growing. Departments where the light blue line is higher than the dark blue lines are those seeing greater planned growth in FY21 than they saw in 20. Departments where either the line falls below 0% reflect a year-to-year -year decrease. So what is driving this spending? Note, the yearly Verizon data breach investigation report, public administration findings. In 2019, there were 23,399 incidents. That's a lot of incidents. 
Of those, 330, 330 of them were confirmed data disclosures. The top uh, breach pattern was cyber espionage, about 42%. Miscellaneous errors and privileged misuse came second at around 17% each. Cyber espionage is, a rampant, uh, is rampant in the public sector with state-affiliated uh, actors account for 79% of all breaches involved external actors. Privilege misuse and errors by insiders accounted only for 30% of the breaches. This is where AI can help us. In 2020, very different data, uh, data reported. There was 6,843 incidents but we had an increase to 346 with confirmed data disclosures. 30% of those breaches were classified as misconfiguration. Give me, give you an example. Someone spins up a data store in the cloud without the security measures in place to protect the data from un, uh, unauthorized access. Not a good thing. Uh, both cyber espionage and privilege misuse decline overall and have dropped into the single digit percentage in this sector. Reasons may be under reporting, failure to detect, or changes of the tactics. Another interesting insight, the 2019 DBIR shows a 168% increase in cyber espionage from 2017. This coincides with the US-China ne uh, negotiation timeline. Coincidence, uh, trend has also moved to ransomware being a large problem for the public sector. Financially motivated attackers utilize it to target a wide range of government entities. Misdelivering and misconfiguration errors also persist. This is just a picture from the government. The need for security is many times greater in the private sector. Uh, ESG Global recently published its annual IT spend and intention research for 2020. 55% of the organizations surveyed will increase overall IT spend in 2020. 36% responded that their organizations wanted to move to improve security and cyber risk management. This should mean that security is baked into the IT decisions, but is it? 62% reported that they will increase cybersecurity spending. Technology organizations are most likely to increase spending. 73% of them responded. Followed by manufacturing, 68%, and retail host, uh, wholesales, around 67%. The top four areas of security investments are cybersecurity technologies that employ artificial intelligence and machine language for threat detection, 32%. Data security was at 31%. Network security was at 30%. And cloud application security was at 27%. The trends put the federal government in competition with industry to recruit and retain top security talent and resources. Human resources are insufficient to keep up with security needs. Next slide, please. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, employment, information's, uh, employment of information security analysts is projected to grow 32% in the next decade. That's astounding. Much faster than the average of all occupations. As you can see, we have 12% for computer occupations and total occupations about 5%. So at a very fast pace. Cybersecurity, cyber attacks have grown in frequency. Analysts will be needed to come up with innovative solutions to protect hackers from stealing critical information and creating problems for our computer networks. Here are some examples, bank and financial institutions as other, other types of corporations. They'll need to increase their information security capabilities in the face of growing cybersecurity threats. As the healthcare industry expands, its use of electronic medical records, ensuring patients' privacy and protecting personal data are becoming more prevalent. I know that I access my medical records online too. The increased adoption of cloud services 
by small and mid-sized businesses and a rise in cyber threats will create demand for managed security services providers in this area. Government, government is uh, focused on needed risk identifications and mitigation planning. Each agency must determine their own needs. GSA, we're coordinating with agencies to help them develop TIC 3.0 requirements consistent with CISA guidance. More on that later. This is why automation is so important. We don't have unlimited resources. Artificial intelligence that automates and or aids human decision-making is necessary to detect and neutralize threats. Next slide, please. I'm sure many of you will recognize this model, the Observe, Oriented, Decide Act. It's a simple process for rapid decision-making to achieve tactical advantage. This was developed by a military strategist in the United States Air Force, John Boyd. Very, uh, very applicable to cybersecurity and AI capabilities, focusing on filtering available information, putting it in context, and quickly making the, the most appropriate decision. Also need to allow for change to be made as more data becomes available. Cyber threat intelligence systems are using machine learning to become more efficient. AI can rapidly close the observed orient the side act loop in real time, thanks to its ability to make the, uh, predictions even faster. Better prediction forms the basis for better decisions. AI can act fast, close the loop at speeds humans can. Example, detecting malware, machine learning database it draws information about any form of malware that's been detected before. When a new form appears, the system can check against the database and block the attack. Reacts almost immediately, prevents business disruption. The inverse is true too though. We have to think about AI enabler cyber attacks. Newly commercial available AI development tools will lower the barrier to entry, which also could put the power in the wrong hands. Agency must take steps to deploy AI defense first. Both highly sensitive government systems and home networks used for telework would need to be secured by AI. COVID was a wake up call for us. Certain agencies were prepared, Others found that they needed to respond rapidly to adjust their networks. Robust infrastructure is necessary to handle increased load. Switching from a telework workforce increased the infrastructure load. I know because we at GSA helped many of those agencies increase their infrastructure capacity. I also want to give kudos to our CIO office. GSA was well prepared for the demand of a mobile workforce. This is why. The reason why was because our CO office took the time to build a telework infrastructure that was agile and secure to support a telework workforce. Wide scale telework is a new, also a new threat vector. Malicious attack, uh, actors take advantage and continues to try to take advantage during this pandemic. A joint advisory from the United Kingdom's National Cybersecurity Center and DHS CISA released this in April. An increased number of malicious cyber attacks actors are exploring the COVID-19 pandemic for their own objectives. I'll give you an example, your home network, you're teleworking as a government person and your technology that you use in house contains compromised technology. This becomes a threat vector. Just one component can compromise an entire digital network. The same can happen outside a physical network. For example, supply chain. Supply chain security is an example of digital framework driving real world operations. I'm gonna give you an example. Facility involved in a government procurement receives shipments from a vendor who uses a certain camera on their equipment, a, a camera on their truck that has technology is from a prohibited company. Possible ability for espionage. It's not just a camera, it's where all that technology that was built into that camera. We work with over 4,000 industry partners, 
many of y'all are in the audience here. For years in risk management framework, we decided products made in the US were acceptable. That's not true anymore. It's, it's, it's not just the case of whether the technology is compromised, this is a question of how much. Government-wide efforts are underway to secure current and next generation networks and the supply chain, 5G, IoT. Cloud-based security tools are needed to secure agencies' applications and data. In addition, agency networks are no longer insulated to on-prem. We have to we have a broader surface pro, uh, to protect. Agencies have multi-cloud environments. We're not getting attacked at our data centers. We're getting attacked at our endpoints, our computers that we're being we're using at home. That's where they're trying to to come in at now. We have a variety of ways to connect beyond traditional wired environment. That's why we have to protect both the security and supply chain. Next slide, please. So what are we doing at GSA? This is a top level look at how we at FAS ITC coordinate with DHS CISA. We have partnered with CISA to develop MTIPS, for example. We also are working with them on the TIC 3.0 reference architect and use case development. In addition, we work with CISA on both continuous diagnostic and mitigation, the CDM program, and federal high value asset HVA program. Also, our ITC IT security subcategory maintains a strong partnership with CISA to align our highly adapted cybersecurity services special item numbers with CISA requirements. Recently, we just modernized the HACSIM at an HVA assessment subcategory. We also partnered with CISA to develop a HACS oral technical evaluation question. And finally, we partner with CISA to manage the CDM tool send in support of the CDM program. Before vendors can add products to the CDM tool send, the products must be submitted to CISA for review. Once CISA approves them, they're placed on the approved products list. Vendors can then apply to sell those products via the send. GSA is also investigating or investing heavily in AI. Listening to customers and stakeholders, we're preparing acquisition vehicles for government-wide AI adoption. In addition to AI, we also focus on 5G. The ongoing rollout of 5G infrastructure is a major development. Gartner predicts spending on 5G to double despite the pandemic. Massive connect of IoT poses major challenges. This is where the national strategy to secure 5G becomes important. There are four key focus areas in that strategy. One, we need to focus on domestic rollout of 5G. Two, assess risk and identify core principles of 5G infrastructure. Three, address risks to the United States economic and national security. And four, promote a responsible global development and deployment of 5G. 5G and AI facilitates edge compute to complement cloud services and getting computing to the edge where needed. We have to build our networks with a zero trust architect. Only those authorized on the network are allowed on the network. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. Uh, this also brings me to our ITC Emerging Technologies Council. Part of the council goal is to find what emerging technologies are available to enhance solutions we provide to customers. For example, we cannot continue to staff more and more cybersecurity analysts in our security operations centers. It's just not sustainable. We also open ourselves up with more human interactions being involved that we, that we can miss those types of situations where a cyber attack occurs. We also need to move from our traditional networks. We need an intelligent network infrastructure that adapts to our business demand. We're currently provisioning bandwidth in a manual sequence process, a, sequ a sequential process. It's not dynamic to business demand, nor is it done smartly. 
in COVID. We had agencies request some more bandwidth because of the demand, but they had to go through the contractual process by having it available when they needed it. We need the network to dynamically adjust in real time to business demand. Networks need to be able to expand and contract without human intervention. To do this, we need artificial intelligence and machine learning to build and to be built into our networks and also in our security operations centers. We need to offset the staff and demand with AI and ML as much as practical. Finally, I want to uh, list out our ITC FY21 priorities. Serving as a strong acquisition resource for ensured compliance with scrim policy. Also supporting agencies in their cloud and emerging technology acquisitions. Also provide a consultative, a consultative approach to assist modernization. And also continue to support small businesses and, corporates, uh, and coordinate supplier management through the acquisition life cycle. And finally, we evolve in our vehicles to leverage innovative acquisition practices. That concludes my presentation. I wanna thank you all, and I will turn it over back to Claire. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you, Alan, so much for those insights. Um, and thank you all to our audience for tuning in today. We do have a great day of programming left, so be sure to stay tuned. I would like to turn it over to Darshan Shah for our next session, which is a session presented by our underwriter, Gigamond. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and be sure to continue to watch the rest of the programming today. <laughs>